Thank you, Andy, for inviting me here and for giving me the opportunity to talk about the first cloud revolution of history. It started here in the US and has been around for more than a century now. And now, no, it's not AWS. I'm referring to the electricity, to the electricity grid. Look, it is a service on demand. Just one click and you have the light. And it is also pay as you go. If you switch it off, then you are only billed for your lap, uh, actual consumption. It has been growing ever since, and for such a long time that people working in the energy sector consider natural to think of, about energy as a proxy of the wealth of nation. The richer the nation, the higher its energy intensity. But then came the big crisis which as well started here, and along with uh, Lehman Brothers and many others, swept away this belief. Now, the world has changed. The old cause-effect correlation, which we used to know, are now gone. Now we live in the age of decoupling. Gross domestic products and energy demand are not related anymore. Neither are oil prices and oil demand and nor oil prices and investment in renewable sources. And so, in all this turmoil, if the world has changed, Enel is bound to change as well. Enel features 89 gigawatt installed capacity, more than 40% of that coming from renewable sources. We have 1.9 million distribution kilometer, million kilometer distribution line, and we are blessed to serve more than 61 million customers. Fortune magazine listed Enel as fifth out of 50 companies that can change the world. And yes, we, we still believe that energy is a crucial service to play a role in our day society. And uh, about the less obvious concept of a, of a smart utilities, let me leave you with this. One out of four digital meters installed in the world has something to do with an L. And eventually, for those of you who are not accustomed to my accent yes, yet, NL was born in Italy, but now has a global footprint. <clears throat> I know that numbers are difficult to remember, so maybe rankings may make, may make things easier. Comparing to the main European utilities, we are number three in conventional generation, but number one in renewables, number one in distribution extension, and in million of customers. And thanks God, number one also in market capitalization, growing in a sector that lost almost 40% of its value in the last six years. So for all these reasons, and mainly for the last one, we look at digitalization as a necessity rather than an ambition. A necessity is the mother of invention. So we think that the second cloud revolution which we are celebrating here today is a wonderful opportunity for us to foster innovation and accelerate change in NL. IT operation in NL were bimodal. By bimodal, I mean almost neurotic, because we had a total outsourcing model serving uh, Spain and South America, while Italy and uh, East Europe were served by on-premises data center. And so our decision was clear and straightforward. Go to the cloud as fast as you can. That meant closing the more than 20 years lasting outsourcing contract and using our data center as a swap hours, swap areas, sorry, for our non-ready application. <clears throat> the complexity of the challenge came from the conjunction of two factors. The relevant volume involved, which you may see here, and an absolutely fixed time frame. That meant moving almost 25 servers per day, Monday to Friday, including Saturdays, Sundays, 
Christmas, New Year's Eve, uh, Easter, whatever bank holiday you can think of. We involved uh, many people in this project because with John Don, no man is an island in tide of itself. And I think that this applies also to companies. Accenture, in, in this transformation journey, supported us as main partner. And yes, you can imagine we completed the, the challenge, but uh, I still wonder if, uh, why. <clears throat> this slide is probably the main reason why I'm here today. We managed to get those savings, uh, half of those savings, right after the migration. But then playing with the services offered by AWS, we managed to get to those numbers. And so what? Yet another migration to cloud story? Yes, indeed. But this was massive and fast. And while massive is easily coupled with corporation, that is not always the case with fast. We were lucky enough to ignite a virtuous cycle between top management and IT team. My first and foremost goal was to convince two people in the company. One was my CEO, which is actually is sitting there. How am I doing, Carlo, now at the moment? Right. Thanks. And the second, our CEO. Because, you know, moving to the cloud has to be a company decision, not an IT move. Having settled that, it was all about execution and tight modeling. About the team, well, for once, having the operation people, the IT operation people, had the opportunity to lead the dance instead of following the latest developer trend. And I can assure you that this has been a fantastic motivation level. Also, the widespread concept of doing the right things, of being the good ones, so that nobody could complain, helped a lot. And eventually, we tolerated unfortunate technology choices sometimes, hazardous planning, and even poor service quality management. But one thing we did not tolerate at all was immobility. Having said that, what's next? In the near future, our idea is cloud normality, moving from cloud first to, to cloud only. And so getting rid of data center, of mainframes, and moving to 100% full cloud operating model. <clears throat> And as mature cloud users, we also want to go serverless, moving from server to services. IoT in NL means enabling the rise of an ecosystem of energy management systems, which will completely transform the utility business model in the next few years. And you know, an ecosystem needs a platform. And we elected AWS IoT as the enabling platform for IoT in NL, because we needed a scalable, reliable, and integrated solution on which to build our new energy management system. And with this, I appreciate your time. It has been a privilege. Grazie. Ciao.